In this video, I'm gonna share with you the 10 best white hat ways to build backlinks to your site and get it ranking fast. Stay tuned. And welcome back marketeers to the channel that always give you the best insight in tutorials and digital marketing. If you like the content of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell icon to show your support and to make sure you don't miss out on my future videos. I also have some exciting announcements at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Now let's get down to it. So what are backlinks? If you're not aware, a backlink refers to any links on other websites that lead to yours. So if the websites linking to you are popular or well known, then it tells Google that you may have an important website as well, which can help your ranking status. The better quality of the sites linking to you, the higher the benefit. So what makes a link high quality? See, Google is pretty good at hiding their algorithm specifications. So there's no way of knowing exactly how they gauge quality links. However, there's a lot of things that we do know through experience and testing that, um, that we know do, does give links more weight, such as high page relevancy. So this is just how relevant the content on the linking page is to yours and it makes a huge difference on how much weight Google gives that link. High domain authority and page authority. This is a metric created by Moz after Google took away our ability to see page rank, which is what Google used, or at least used to use. So we make do with what we can. It's a score between zero and 100 based on the number of linking root domains and the amount of backlinks pointing to the linking website. You can find uh, other variations of this number from tool to tool, and none are accurate to one another, but it can be a helpful guide to determine which pages you want linking to you. Follow versus no follow. Basically, no follow links just contain a rel equals no follow directive within the href HTML tag that uh, tells search engines not to follow that inbound link, which traditionally didn't count for anything according to Google. But as of March 2020, they're now telling us that it's a hint for indexing and crawling. So I wouldn't mark them off as being of no value, even for ranking purposes. But alas, follow links will always carry more weight. Editorial links. So this is a link that comes from a site that has high quality content or typically organically acquired. Uh, these tend to be more valuable because they are more natural as opposed to linking to yourself by paying others to promote your content on sites like article distribution portals or commenting on posts or directory submissions, etc. So they tend to have more power for that reason. Uh, anchor text usage. Where exact match keyword anchor text is more valuable, too much of it could be trouble for your page or website. So if you're attempting to take control of your anchor text on other sites, which is not necessarily recommended, uh, then you want to be careful about how you balance it with other forms of anchor text, such as brand name or URL or partial match keywords. Sends traffic to your site. This one's kind of a no-brainer. Uh, if you're getting links, of course you want them to be sending traffic to your site from a trustworthy site. So you typically don't want links from domains that are notorious for sending out tons of spam. So it's just about quality there. Unique and difficult to get. This kind of gets back to where we were talking about, uh, about editorial links. Uh, if they're unique and they don't have tons of links going out, they're typically going to be higher quality in the eyes of the search engines. So let's go on to what linkable assets are. So these are the base for pretty much all content that is going to be link worthy. Linkable assets are just high quality, engaging, interesting pieces of content. Uh, so basically they're articles, infographics, tools, anything that's of super high quality uh, that make other websites want to link to your page. It's going to make your outreach much easier as well. So in doing this, of course, you want to diversify your topics as much as you can without stretching out of your niche too far. And uh, you also want to keep them current as much as you can. If they start getting older than the current year, it's probably time to add an update paragraph or two and relaunch it. So for stronger natural link linking profiles, uh, you want to use self-explanatory brand, uh, branding for your product services and content. 
Um, that way, the Anchor Text, um, another website uses to link to you, you know, naturally, will likely be of the branded name plus keyword phrase variety or something in between. But this way, all your bases are covered. So this is a great strategy to follow. Uh, I have some examples here. Um, for example, Q-tip cotton swabs, which is pretty much the way you always see it written anywhere that you find those products, uh, would be obviously be much better than just having the brand name like Soylent. And that's mostly what you see here. That's some kind of soy drink or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, and then uh, for courses, some kind of course here called Kellogg Digital Marketing Strategies. Obviously, we would be much better name than just, say, digital marketing uh, like this company did here. So let's go ahead and move on to the actual methods for link building. Uh, first up, we have link roundups. So link roundups and resource pages are curated lists of, best, of the best content in a particular industry. Um, how do you find them? Well, you locate the articles that match with your niche. You'll wanna use uh, what are called search operators in your browser address bar. Uh, I recommend trying them all and building a list of relevant sites that you find. Uh, for example, I used uh, famous artists plus in title roundup. So this is gonna find anything about famous artists in quotes, meaning it's exact. Um, and in the title, you're gonna see roundup. So famous artist roundup or something like that. Same goes with any of these. You just put your keyword in and you do in URL. So that's in the, in the web address, roundup, um, put the keyword and then in quotes roundup, you can try out each one of these um, to try to find them. I would go ahead and get a spreadsheet out and mark down all the sites. And then you also try to get the email address for the webmaster or the owner of the site or whatever. Um, if you can't find the email address on the site or contact us page or something like that, then you can always get on social or you can use Hunter, which might help you find the addresses quicker on the website. I'll put the link in the description for that. Once you locate the emails, you wanna start easy with them. Keep in mind that most people who run backlink heavy sites get a ton of requests and, and pitches. So if you go full speed ahead and beg them for a link to your website, you're not likely to get it, you know what I mean? So you wanna to try to create, create an email that doesn't directly ask for anything. In the email, you can focus instead on the content that the website has published. It lets the owner know that you respect their work. It could say something like, I read your blog post on whatever the subject is and I loved it. I have a similar article I wrote that might interest you. It covers XYZ that helps expound on your work. Would you be interested in checking it out and giving me your opinion? Something similar to that. As with all value exchanges, the party you're pitching to wants to know that they're getting some benefit from the interaction as well. Once you've broken the ice, they'll be much more likely to help you in return. Broken link building. So basically this is locating links on websites that are no longer working and asking them to put your, the link to your relevant page in its place. I believe Ryan Dean called it the moving man method. An easy way to start this process is by using uh, SEM Rutch to locate the 404 pages on the competition's website. Then you can uh, sort it by highest referring domains and that way it'll be easy to target the web pages linking back to you or linking back to that to that uh, page and you can reach out to them. Um, so after that, you'll need to determine whether the page is relevant enough to get a link from and whether they have enough authority to even bother with. But once you start the outreach process, you can send an email to the site owner saying something like, I noticed this broken link. I post very similar content. May I suggest that you link to this piece I published instead? Just make sure to attach a screenshot with your message that demonstrates the broken link to make it easier for them to find. And if you're recreating the post or if you just wanna ensure your chances of getting the link, you can use the Wayback Machine, which will let you see the page that no longer exists. Um, and you wanna kinda of check out the specific topics the page was talking about and incorporate them into your content. And uh, yes, you can also combine this with the link roundup. You know, For example, if you find a broken link on one of these pages, it'll be much easier for you to get your link in there. Guest posts. This one's a really common option for those who like to write content or you can outsource the content. 
um, and you post it on other relevant websites in order to get a link back to your site. Of course, there are some scenarios where the editor of a website would recognize your superior talent and ask you to write guest posts for them, but I wouldn't really hold your breath for that. <laughs> Instead, strive to regularly interact with thought leaders um, you want to target on social media uh, to kind of prep them for the request, you know? Um, but if you don't have that much patience, uh, you just have to figure out a way to do a pitch in a cold and e cold email to an editor or owner. Once the idea is accepted, then you write the post and submit it. Uh, make sure you're targeting blogs with good reputations and that do accept guest posts. Uh, follow any guidelines they might have when you make your pitch. Explain uh, who you are, uh, what your company does, and your qualifications. And of course, you're gonna wanna stay close to your niche. That goes without saying, um, not just because relevant backlinks are good backlinks, but because you also want to be an expert on whatever your topic it is that you're talking about. You can also do research on other guest post authors in your niche, find out where they've been and start looking into those sites yourself. There's no need to reinvent the wheel as long as you are focused on quality. Uh, give out testimonials. So giving out testimonials is another win-win solution. If there's a product or service that you love, offer to talk it up on their website. It's pretty much as simple as that. From that point, it shouldn't be hard to translate your testimonial into a link to your site through your name or company name in the testimonial. Just be sure to include it when you send it to them. Not all methods of this are good methods, so be picky about who you approach with this. Aside from... Um, making sure the authority is there. You want to check other reviews and testimonials on the site to see if they give follow links or no follow links. That may help you decide whether it's worth pursuing for you. Reviews from bloggers. So this is a bit of the op an opposite of uh, the one above here. Um, all you do is offer your product or service to bloggers or influence in your niche for free or cheap. Um, in order to get a get a review or backlink. You wanna avoid news and how-to websites, so just kind of stick to blogs for now. Uh, a quick search will help you find the right site for you and your product or service. And then it's just a matter of reaching out and asking them for a review. Just a word of warning, um, you wanna avoid language that implies that you're trading your product or service for a backlink, because um, it is against Google's webmaster guidelines. Um, but that said, you want to emphasize the quality of the thing that you're offering and let the other person choose to give it a try and give you a review with a backlink. Uh, score some interviews. I know it seems a little unconventional, but interviews on blogs or podcasts are a great way to rack up link building opportunities as well. It's a different kind of guest post, if you will. When you're on someone else's content, General practice is to link to your website or social media or both. So it's pretty common. Um, it'll also provide you an opportunity to speak to your area of expertise and grow your authority. Uh, and the more authority that you get, obviously, uh, the more interviews and even guest posts that you'll be invited to, uh, to participate in. And the more chances you know, to get backlinks you'll get. Harrow. So this is a, this one is just about good old fashioned journalism. Some reporters are always looking for credible sources and this can be a great way to gain some prominent mentions. And all you'll need to do is sign up with Harrow as a source and you'll start receiving uh, emails right away, about three or four a day. They come straight to your inbox. Uh, this one can be a little bit more of a competition. So once you see a request that comes in, uh, that you can speak to with authority, respond as quickly as possible with your own si insight and a few credentials to establish that you know what you're talking about. Uh, that each email will be packed full of subjects you can respond to. But again, you'll want to make sure that you respond as quickly as possible to make sure someone doesn't beat you to the punch. If the reporter you helped out uses your quote, they'll need to cite the source, and that's it, you've got a back backlink. Branded technique. So what makes you stand out 
like really stand out. And I don't mean excellent service, free shipping, fast service, or any of that common jargon. Do you have a secret formula for making magic within your niche? If so, you need to name it. Name your secret formula and, and then start building a brand about it, around it, cultivate a brand around it. You know, uh, but remember, this is about establishing authority. So whatever it is, you're going to need to be able to back up the idea. So what data do you have that supports your method? If you use it to serve clients, build up a case study uh, uh, that you can use. Um, and once you got the credibility piece down, it's time to start you know, sharing it everywhere. You wanna start uh, posting on social media, um, you know, make blog posts about it, do guest posts, whatever you can uh, to try to get that name out there. And uh, hopefully with time, it'll stick then typically this means more links for you. Unlinked brand mentions. This is of course when your brand is mentioned but not linked to. This is an easy one since the authority or the author of the post obviously drew on your expertise because they like, trust, and respect you. So it's pretty simple. You just need to reach out to the author uh, who, dropped the, who dropped your name or the name of your technique, send them a friendly email, and ask if they'd be willing to link to your piece of content. So that way it's easier for their readers to find the strategy they referenced in the content and everybody wins. So in locating them, you can just use SEMrush's brand mention or brand monitoring tool uh, and you know add, just add every form of your business name, including common misspellings or mistakes to track the mentions. As a free option, you can always use Google Alerts. Um, but it's not really, it, it works good, okay, but you're likely to get a lot of useless emails uh, when it does work. So uh, it can be valuable to gain a few extra quality backlinks as you go. Skyscraper content. So these last two are more about creating linkable assets, but nonetheless important to building backlinks, and we will circle around to the backlink part of it. Skyscraper technique was coined by Brian Dean in 2015. This is a strategy where you improve on existing popular content and replicate the backlinks. So essentially you find a towering piece of content or multiple pieces of content and you write a super, a super article on the topic. So you wanna start off by choosing an impactful topic in your niche. Um, then you can do a quick Google search and uh, find out who's ranking for it and examine the competing articles. You want to do plenty of analysis. Uh, how long and how thorough is it? How could it be better? Did they leave anything out? Is their research or data old or irrelevant? You're also going to want to know what keywords these articles are ranked for to make sure that you include them in your articles. Again, SAM Rush is a great tool for those uh, to find those, those types of things out and you'll be able to track how much organic traffic and backlinks your competitor sites are getting. Once you have all that data down, think about how you can improve upon the content. You don't need to go overboard and get stuck in the analysis paralysis. Just remember Principal Bachman's razor. The simplest explanation is usually the right one. So you just need to create way longer and better content. You just have to make sure it's useful, credible, and well-researched. So you might also want to pay attention to where the competitors are getting their data and uh, get some studies and statistics to back up your content. You can also hire companies to conduct the market and data research for you if you want it to be unique. Once you get it all together and published, uh, you'll want to uh, go ahead and reach out to all the backlink sources that your article competitors have to get them to link out to your article instead. You should also figure out who the influencers and thought leaders are in your niche, present your new article to them, and hopefully the rest is history. Remember to be crafty with your emails though and explain that what you've written provides a new angle or better research or whatever your angle is. Infographics. So creating infographics has the advantage of compiling a lot of information into a fun and easy, easily digestible format. And not to mention it outperforms all other visual content. Uh, the trick is to focus on trending topics and include helpful stats and data visual, visual, visualization. Uh, if you manage to create one that is interesting and original, it can entice people that are interested in that topic to share it. Uh, you also need to know who you're targeting. 
you know, so that you know what your content's tone and theme should be. For example, if you're targeting young college students, you probably don't want to assume an overly serious tone of voice. Uh, create a data visualization that informs and delights. Uh, make sure you're taking your readers on a journey. So instead of sticking a bunch of statistics all over the place, you want them to have fun while they're doing it. Organize it in a way that makes sense. You know, determine a starting point as well as a conclusion. To create it, you can use Visme or Canva or, you know, any tools like that. And when you publish it on your site, you want to make sure and include a written copy uh, when you publish it. And then just start outreaching um, to social media, uh, to influencers um, in your space. Uh, plus, you can submit to press releases, sites like PR Newswire, PR Web. That's something we didn't talk about on this is press releases. But it can be another good way to get revolutionary content like your new skyscraper article or your new tool out there to the public and potentially get noticed by journalists. And this is by no means an exhaustive tutorial on all the details to make smart decisions about, you know, which link prospects to pursue. So let me know in the comments if you'd like me to create a more detailed video about any of the link building methods I went over. Also, which strategy on this video do you use or will you start using because of this video? Now it's time for the announcements. Uh, be on the lookout for my new book, Unlock the Secrets of Marketing, Eight Easy Steps, $10,000 Additional Revenue for Your Business, coming out very soon. It will be free for the digital copy. Uh, in addition, my business academy will be opening soon as well. Uh, these two things will be focused on how to make tons more money for your business without spending a dime on marketing. I'm also working on a local SEO course, uh, but that one might not be released for a few more months. So leave a comment below and tell me if you're excited about these releases. And until next time, take care. Not that. Give out that word. Review boogers.